The Boran region is without doubt one of Europe's most distinctive, widely recognized and best loved landscapes. Though translating as a rocky place, the Boran has been more aptly described as the Fertile Rock, a title that better captures the essence of this unique place. The rich heritage with which the Boran Hills are endowed far surpasses anything found in the surrounding patchwork of fields, with their forty shades of green, for which Ireland is famed. Ironic, then, that in the Irish context, when we speak about high-quality, unspoiled, natural environments, it is the Boran that immediately springs to mind. In spite of its hostile countenance and remote location on the northwestern periphery of the European seaboard, more and more people are drawn physically and emotionally to this resilient, uncompromising place to rekindle their relationship with the land, with nature, and with their heritage. It seems that the unique natural and cultural attributes of the Burns' enigmatic landscape are increasingly valued in a Europe where much of the countryside has lost its intrinsic character, diversity and appeal. The Burren is special by any number of standards. Notwithstanding its dramatic beauty, it is undoubtedly one of the most fascinating geological landscapes in the world, abounding in an array of unusual landforms. These include disappearing lakes, known as turlocks, dense networks of meandering cave systems, sweeping, swirling limestone terraces, and expansive, fractured limestone pavements. Representing a classic example of what is described as a karst landscape, this striking geological heritage is the legacy of millions of years of glacial, tectonic, solutional, and cultural forces, all readily visible even to the amateur geologist. The Burn is also home to a remarkably diverse and well-preserved built heritage, richly representative of every era from the Neolithic period onward. Layer upon layer of distinctive monuments make up this fascinating cultural palimpsest, allowing us to trace the evolution of Burren society from its humble Stone Age beginnings, almost 6,000 years ago, to the present day. Magnificent evocative structures such as the famous 5,800-year-old Paul Nebron portal tomb exemplify this fine heritage, though this is but one jewel in a remarkable treasure trove to be found scattered across these rocky hills. Most famously, perhaps, the Burn also boasts a stunning flora, the sheer beauty, diversity and unique attributes of which have attracted and captivated legions of admirers. Almost 70% of Ireland's native flora is found crammed into this small rocky fragment of the country, including 23 of the 28 native orchid species and several plants from far-flung Arctic and Mediterranean regions. In much the same way as the massive grey slabs of Paul Nebron have come to symbolise the cultural heritage of the Burn, so too has the minute, vibrant beauty of the spring gentian come to represent the equally diverse and fascinating ecological wealth of this region. The compact size of many of the flowers that typify the Burn's unique flora is further embellished by their rich colour and intricate construction. The fly orchid is a perfect example, its tiny flower having evolved to mirror the shape, colour and texture of a certain species of bee, an ingenious conspiracy to attract winged couriers for its valuable pollen load. Today such extraordinary flowers are more likely to attract visitors from all over the world who come to the burn to pay homage on bended knee to these miniature miracles of nature. Beyond the flagship species of flora such as the minute orchids and cool blue gentians, for most people the real attraction and intrigue of this flora lies in the spectacular abundance of colour, shape and smell contained within even the smallest pocket of pasture. Up to 50 different plants per square metre are found packed into some of the richest of the Burns limestone grasslands. Of course, where there is such an exuberant flora, there is usually an equally rich fauna, and the Burren is again blessed with a tremendous wealth in this regard, from elusive carnivores such as the pine marten to pungent herds of fleet-footed feral goats. 
Almost all of Ireland's 30-odd native butterfly species are found in the burn, even though this is less than 0.5% of the national landmass, which is again testament to the purity and quality of this region's natural environment. While the geology, archaeology and ecology of the burn have been subject to much well-deserved attention and praise, one very special and integral aspect of the burn's multifaceted landscape has somehow escaped such perusal. The fascinating story of farming in this region and its contribution to every aspect of this rich and varied heritage. Our understanding and appreciation of the burn is incomplete without a greater awareness of this remarkable and quite intriguing story of a people and their place. Innumerable generations of farmers have left their mark on the burn, influencing the area as they struggle to wrest a living from this challenging landscape, the particular attributes of which often forced farmers to adopt somewhat unusual management practices, many of which still survive. None is more significant than the practice of winter grazing, when livestock are herded onto these rocky hills over the winter, grazing back the dense grasses and scrub that would otherwise smother much of the rich flora and fine monuments of the burn. This agrarian influence pervades the entire burn upland landscape, reflected in the barren hillsides criss-crossed with bare stone walls, and in the innumerable monuments, be they funerary or functional, that are liberally strewn throughout. Sometimes even what appears to be a casual rearrangement of stones belies an important agrarian function of a long-forgotten time. Truly, this is no wilderness, no lunar landscape, but a landscape that has been profoundly shaped and enriched by the hand of man from time immemorial. Those who know it well know that the Burren is a dynamic, living landscape, closely attuned to human activity, enlivened by human presence, threatened by human neglect and excess. Fresh challenges face this precious landscape in today's fast-moving, technology-driven age. The retreat of agriculture and the corruption of its ancient traditions are of particular concern, as is the upsurge in tourism and the attendant threats posed by this burgeoning industry. Considering the richness of the flora, fauna, built heritage, landscape and culture of the burn, as well as the austere beauty of this unique place, it is little wonder that Cistercian monks, whose lives revolved around the routines of work and prayer, chose to locate an abbey here at Corkham Row. They dedicated it to Santa Maria de Petra Fertilis, or Our Lady of the Fertile Rock. Today, over 800 years later, this fertile rock, the burn, continues to engage, nourish and nurture a whole new generation of pilgrims with the rugged beauty and impressive heritage of its limestone hills. <laughs>